I honestly hope you're ready because I'm about to show you, hands down, the coolest thing I ever learned in math. So let's waste no time. This is awesome. Okay, so it turns out that you can write a polynomial that mimics any function ever. No matter how complicated it is, no matter how weird it is, you can replace it with a polynomial that will behave just like it. And you can even control what you want the interval of convergence to be, like where you want it to match. So we're going to start with matching it at zero because, frankly, that's the easiest, and then I'll show you how to adjust that. But all you need to do to write a polynomial that mimics a function is know that polynomial's derivatives. And that is because the derivatives mimic the behavior, I'm sorry, determine, dang it, the behavior of a function. So like its first derivative tells us if it's increasing or decreasing. Its second derivative tells us its concavity. Its third derivative tells us the rate at which the concavity is changing. And so each derivative tells us a little bit more about the way the function curves. So if we know a function's derivatives, we can build a polynomial that matches those derivatives. And the more derivatives that we know, the better the polynomial we can build. We can create a polynomial that mimics a function. It's actually really cool. I'm not even kidding. I'm excited about this. Okay, ready? We call this polynomial that we're going to build, by the way, a Taylor polynomial. I assume it's after the guy figured it out. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to look at the function um, ln of 1 plus x which we got, I believe, before by integrating, but we're gonna do it in a better way now. Okay, so if we want to create a polynomial, notice this says that approximates it through its first four derivatives, then we need to know the first four derivatives of that function. So since I'm nice, I already took those derivatives. So here you can see, here's my function, my first derivative, my second derivative, third and fourth derivatives. Now, um, I need then at least a fourth order polynomial because I need to be able to take four derivatives of my polynomial. So my polynomial is going to have to be at least fourth order. Now that is not cute, but look what that is. It's just a generic polynomial that is of order four. So again, it's kind of written backwards. It starts at the constant x term, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth. These c values are what we need to figure out. We need to figure out what the constants of this polynomial need to be to make it act just like the natural log of 1 plus x. Let's go. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our constants are such that when we take the first derivative of our polynomial, we get the same thing as when we take the first derivative of our function at 0. We're going to make it center at 0. Centering at zero means my polynomial is going to exactly match my function only at zero. Everywhere away from zero, it's going to approximate. But right at zero, it's going to be perfect because we're going to make it be that way. All right, so the first thing we want to do is evaluate all of those derivatives we took at zero. So you'll notice if you put a zero into the natural log of 1 plus x, you get a zero. f prime, you get a 1. f double prime, you get a negative 1 f triple prime, you get a 2, and the fourth derivative, you get a negative 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a polynomial up here that does the same thing. So first things first, if f of 0 equals 0, then I want p of 0 also to equal 0. I want them to match. Well, if you plug a 0 into p of x, all of these terms go away, and it turns out that c0 has to be 0. So I found my first constant. Good job, me. Okay. Now, I know that the first derivative, if I stick a 0 into it, I should get a 1. So I want that same thing to happen to my polynomial. Well, let's take the first derivative of this thing. c1x, some constant times x, that would be c1, plus 2c2x, plus 3c3x squared, plus 4c4x cubed. I need to plug a 0 into this and have it come out to a 1. Oh, plug in a 0. See you later to all these. It turns out C1 has to be 1. Let's go replace it. Same thing for my second derivative. If I plug a 0 into the second derivative, I want to get a negative 1 this time. 
So let's take the second derivative of this function. Let's take the derivative of the derivative. I'm going to switch colors. Okay, so the derivative of 2c2x is 2c2. The derivative of 3c3x squared is 6c3x. And the derivative of 4c4x cubed is now 12c4x squared. Again, I want to plug a 0 into this, and I want it to come out to negative 1. So this has to be negative 1, my constant. Well, that means that c2 has to be negative 1 half. So here, shh, negative 1 half. All right, third derivative. I need p triple prime of 0 to match f triple prime of 0, so I need it to be a 2. Okay, take the derivative of constant, it goes away. I have 6c3 plus 24c4x. Plug in a 0, I need it to be a 2. So I need this to be a 2. c3 must equal 1 third. 1 third. Right. Last one. I need that the fourth derivative evaluated at zero of my polynomial matches my function, so negative six. So again, take the derivative of constant, it's zero. The derivative of 24c4x is 24c4. In order for that to equal negative six, I need c4 to be negative one fourth. So look what I have. I have a polynomial. p of x has to be x minus x squared over two plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the 4th over 4. And dang it if that isn't what we got when we integrated earlier. Now, I don't have to tell you that that matches beautifully, but only around 0. As we move away from 0, it doesn't look so hot. Okay, now, for some polynomials, we'll be able to add more terms and make it better. For others, we won't. This is one where we won't. It came from a geometric. Negative 1 to 1 is going to be it for us on this one. Okay, now, what I need to tell you is that what we just did, you never have to do again. Because you may notice that there's a pattern here. So let me illuminate you. If you take the derivative of this polynomial over and over and over and over again, you're very quickly going to notice that you get the same stinking numbers every time, right? Here, you ended up with a 24 out front. Here, you ended up with a 6 out front. Here, you ended up with a 2 out front. Here, the last digit you had was a 1. And here, this one was a 1 as well. You may notice this pattern of numbers. You may not recognize this pattern of numbers. These are factorial numbers. This is 0 factorial, yes, 0 factorial equals 1. Don't ask. 1 factorial is 1. 2 factorial is 2 times 1, which is 2. <laughs> I almost wrote 1. Okay. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 6. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 24. Now, think about why that's coming out. You're taking repeated derivatives. So the first time you take the derivative of c4x to the fourth, you multiply a 4 down. Now this is all to the third. Next time you take its derivative, you multiply the 3 down. Now it's to the second. Then you multiply the 2 down. Now it's to the first. Then you multiply the 1 down. And so what ends up being your coefficient is a 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 in the end. So very smart people take this derivative meh, a couple times and go, you know what? I'm not going to do that anymore. What I'm going to do is look at the pattern and go from there. And that is what is on this next slide. Now, I am warning you that it looks intimidating. It really does. But the reason I walked you through the derivative thing is because I want you to see what's in this polynomial. It's freakishly easy. It's literally just a shortcut so that you don't have to do what I just did with taking all those derivatives and stuff. Okay, so this is what we call the Taylor series centered at zero. And I want you to notice that all this is, is the same thing we just did. So it is your f of 0, your f prime of 0, your f double prime, your f triple prime. It's This is all of your derivatives. 
evaluated at zero, right? Those are the first numbers. Now, they're also divided by the factorials. Now, think about why that is. Let's go with our um, last term, right? We ended up with 24C4 is equal to 6. So then I had to divide my 6 by 24. Well, this was my fourth derivative. And this just happens to be 4 factorial. Okay. So again, by writing all of those derivatives, plugging in zeros and setting them equal, we ended up every time with exactly this. When I, this one came out to 1 fourth. This one ended up coming out to 1 third for us. This one came out to negative one half, now I don't even remember. Okay. But the idea here is that you don't have to go through that process. All you have to do is memorize this formula. Okay, And again, look at this. It is going to be your nth derivative over n factorial x to the n. So if I want you to tell me what the 27th order term is, you go, oh well, that's the 27th derivative, evaluated at 0, over 27 factorial x to the 27. That's what that term is. Period. End of story. So if they want you to write the 8th order polynomial, well, let's make it easier. If they want you to write the 3rd order polynomial of something, the first thing I do is I say, okay, well, I know it's going to be my function over 0 factorial x to the 0 plus I write this shell out, right? All I have to do is go back and find my derivatives and plug them in, and I'm done. I have my polynomial. Yeah, so memorize that formula. This looks crazy. I know it does. Why did they replace the x and, or the n and make a k? I don't know. But this is literally like, this is the number derivative you took. So if this is your fifth derivative, then this is an x to the fifth, and this is a 5 factorial. If this is your 100th derivative that you're plugging in, then this better be a 100 factorial, and this better be an x to the 100. And you can create as many terms as you want. You can create as many terms as derivatives you're willing to take. Okay. <laughs> Memorize it. Memorize it. Okay, so... When we looked at that last AP problem, I said that we would talk about the words Taylor and McLaurin in the next video. Well, here we are. Guess what? A Taylor series is the general name that we give any series that's created this way by taking derivatives and plugging them into that shortcut formula. A Taylor series can be centered anywhere. And by center, we mean when you evaluate your derivatives, if you want to center it two, you plug in a two. If you want to center it negative five, you plug in a negative five. Then McLaurin comes along and says, well, I want something to be named after me. And so they say, okay, fine. We'll name the specific Taylor series that's evaluated at zero after you. Okay. So they can say, write the Taylor series centered at zero, or they can just say, write the McLaurin series. It's the same thing. Now, if they say Taylor series, they have to tell you where to center. McLaurin is the same damn thing, it's just centered at zero. I am gonna make a separate video where we do one of these, so I do not rush through it. And really need somebody to figure out how to bust through my 15 minute time limit. I really, really do.